Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. In language, we have a type of word that is called a compound word. A compound word is when two established words come together to create a whole new word simply by connecting them together, whether that be with a hyphen, by just putting them together, or keeping the space by having the two words function as one. We use these kinds of words so often in language, perhaps you don't even realise some of them are compound words when you use them. Take words like newspaper and railroad. News, paper, rail and road all work as words in their own right, but also work when connected together. Yet when we say words like newspaper, we don't think that these are two established words. Well, I don't anyway. And you may have noticed that these examples of compound words were nouns. It seems that compound words are fairly often nouns as they're usually coined to give brand new things a name, usually easy to understand names. Take the name fish hook, it's a compound of the words fish and hook. Whoever created the fish hook clearly decided that instead of giving it a unique name unto itself, they would just call it a fish hook, as it's a hook for fish. It's a simple name that allows people to quickly understand what the thing is, although yes, it isn't the most exciting of names to explain. And if you really want some more examples of compound words to understand them, think of things like bodyguard, teaspoon, raincoat, lighthouse to hot dog, beach ball and sunglasses. Though with all these words I just covered, if we broke them up, I'm sure you'd be able to understand what the separate words are and mean. That's the wonder of compound words. Two easy to understand words come together to create a new concept that's easy to understand. But is this always the case? Perhaps more words are actually compound words and we simply don't realise as we aren't familiar with the initial words that make up the compound. Well, with the name we are looking at today, this may very well be the case for a lot of us. It definitely was for me before I researched its etymology. This name is of course the name of the capital city of the nation of Hungary, Budapest. The city of Budapest covers an area over 500 square kilometers large and has a population of around 1.77 million people. However, what's interesting is that it's actually a population that is going down in size. In 1989, the population peaked to 2.2 million, but since then it has dwindled. The city is also a tourism hotspot with many from around the world coming to explore the place. I haven't visited myself, but it's on my list for sure. The city is also littered with hot springs, meaning there are many baths there too. It's also home to the second oldest subway system in the world and the world's oldest zoos. Though my favourite fact about Budapest is that there's a railway line ran primarily by children. I'm not sure why it has this but it tickles me very much and I'm glad it exists. So it seems like Budapest is a city that really should be on your radar if it isn't already. Anyway, I'm not being paid by the Budapest Tourism Board so let's look into this name. As mentioned Budapest is in fact a compound noun, something I really did not know until I started my quest for nomenclature knowledge. I would have presumed it was a name rooted in some sort of ancient Hungarian group of people or something like that, as we see with many other cities around the world. However, that really isn't the case. It's simply the words Buddha and Pest compounded together. Though, what exactly are Buddha and Pest? What do these two words even mean? Well, no, Budapest isn't a pest-infested Buddhist city. I imagine a lot of people outside of Hungary and those without a knowledge of history slash geography may very well not know. Hence why they wouldn't also know it's a compound word to begin with. Well, in the same way the word Budapest formed from the words of Buddha and Pest coming together, the city or Buddha Budapest formed from the cities of Buddha and Pest coming together. Yep, Buddha and Pest were two smaller cities that were merged to form the modern larger city of Budapest, hence the title of this video. What I love about this name is it really does obey the rules of compound nouns. Why make up a completely different name for a thing and have people try and figure out what the new name relates to, when you can just put together two established words and people immediately know what the thing is? This would have especially been the case for the residents of the previous two cities of Buddha and Pest, though that does mean Budapest has quite a dull etymology. This could be a pretty quick video. What's Budapest's etymology? It's Buddha and Pest combined. Boom, job done. However, there's way more I want to talk about. How did these two initial cities form? What brought them together? And of course, how did they get their names? Of course, the initial thing that brought these two cities together is their geographic location. Both cities lay either side of the Danube River. The Danube River is the second longest river in all of Europe. Hungary is just one of the nations that the river flows through. From east to west, the river flows through Germany, Austria, Slovakia, Hungary, Croatia, Serbia, Bulgaria, Romania, Moldova, Ukraine, and ends in the Black Sea. It's a seriously long river and many other cities call it their home, and approximately 20 million people will land the Danube for their drinking water. The name of this river relates to the world of Roman mythology, with the river being named after the ancient Roman river god Danubius. When Buddha and Pest were two separate cities, Buddha was the city on the western banks of the Danube, while the city of Pest land the eastern banks of the river. And while Buddha and Pest are no longer cities in their own right, these two parts of the now larger city of Budapest are still very much known as Buddha and Pest, each side with their own unique image. I've even read that residents of the city like to 
argue over which side of the city is better. However, it's believed that there were settlements here before even Buddha or Pest. Evidence of Stone Age settlements have been found here, and of course there was the ancient Roman city of Aquincum, which only remains in ruins. The name Aquincum is believed to relate to the fact that the city was by the waters of the river, derived from the Latin word for water, aqua. So let's start with the Buddha half of Budapest. Buddha is considered the quieter residential part of the city, littered with beautiful architecture and beautiful nature. It seems that this calm side of the city is where many Hungarians like to call their home. The city of Buddha began to take shape in 1247, when the Buddha fortress was built by King Bela IV of Hungary. With this fortress built, citizens came from around the country to live their life and open up a shop in its shadow. Of course, being home to the fortress of the king meant that Buddha was hugely important, and in 1361, Buddha became the official capital of Hungary. Where the name Buddha comes from, however, we aren't certain on. Do we have a few theories? One idea is that the name came from the king who actually built the fortress there, Bela IV, and his name eventually evolved into the name Buddha. The other idea is that the name Buddha comes from an old Slavic word that meant water. In modern Slavic languages, water is something along the lines of Voda, or a variation of that. I could see how Voda could become Buddha, and it makes sense they would name it after water. I mean, the Romans did the exact same thing with their settlement that was there many years before, as we mentioned. And of course, across the river from Buddha, we have Pest. One article I read had the line, when night falls, Buddha goes to sleep and Pest wakes up. And this seems to be the best way to explain the difference between the two halves of the city. Pest is the city's home of nightlife. It's much more lively with bars, cafes, and restaurants. It seems to very much be the heart of the action in the city, though this means that not as many people choose to live here, especially those with families who don't want their kids living next to a nightclub. Despite the fact that Buddha became the capital of Hungary and Pest is the latter part of the modern name, it seems that Pest as a settlement is actually older than Buddha. The fortress of Buddha was constructed in 1247, and we have written mention of Pest coming from writings as old as 1148. That's almost a hundred years before Buddha was created. As for Pest's name, it seems to relate to a Slavic word meaning things along the line of furnace, oven, and cove. Why the settlement was named after a furnace I'm not too sure. I've read it could relate to caves where there were fires in a nearby area or even to the kilns and smiths that the city would have had. It's a name from the 1100s so it's understandable as to why we aren't too sure on it. Nevertheless this is where the two separate names of Buddha and Pest are thought to come from. And these two cities, despite being so close, stayed separate for the longest of times, developing independently each other with their own ideas and geography which can still be seen with the modern city today. However the city's becoming one started to take shape around the turn of the century, between the 17th and 18th century. It was in this time the royal German family, the House of Habsburg, took over Hungary. This Habsburg rule led to the formation of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. I feel really bad brushing over the formation of a whole new empire, but we don't really need to go into too much detail for it in this video. I'm sure there are many great YouTube videos by creators far better than myself on the formation of this empire, so go check them out. Of course, this brand new empire really helped boost the stature of Hungary and made the nation a much bigger player on the world stage. Age, meaning it needed an equally impressive capital city to represent the nation. This meant that the two cities of Buda and Pest grew exponentially and were being developed to be one of the capitals of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Of course, if they were to be a capital, it meant they had to be one singular city. A bridge had to be built between these two very different but very close cities. And I'm not talking about metaphorical bridges or symbolism or anything like that, but a literal bridge over the Danube that would connect Buda and Pest. The Sirchenia Chain Bridge was opened in 1849, and it was the first bridge in the hundreds of years of these cities coexisting to be built between Buddha and Pest over the Danube. The name comes from Isvan Sischinje, a Hungarian politician, a key supporter of the construction of the bridge, and considered by many as the greatest Hungarian. The bridge is seen as a symbol of progress and unity between the east and west of the city. So weirdly, I guess this bridge is a literal bridge between Buddha and Pest and the metaphorical bridge between the two as well. Finally, 24 years later in 1873, the two cities of Buddha and Pest finally became one forming the city of Budapest as we know it today. However, what I failed to mention is there's actually a third city in all of this, that being Oboda. This name means Old Buddha and it was on the western banks of the Danube along with just Buddha. Nowadays, Old Buddha isn't so much its own part of the city but a district in the Buddha part of Budapest. I guess the name kind of is and isn't referenced in Budapest's name with the Buddha part which could be seen as relating to Old Buddha and Buddha. I guess if they wanted to include more of a reference to the old city, they could have called the city Old Buddha. Budapest. Finally, why was it dubbed Budapest and not Pest Buddha? Well, apparently it was initially known as Pest Buddha, but the name Budapest won out. Why this was the case, however, I'm not too sure. It could be many reasons. Budapest is alphabetical, Buddha was the more important city of it being the former capital, and Budapest just sounds
sounds nicer rolls off the tongue easier, though maybe it only sounds nicer as Budapest is the name we're all used to. If this city was called Pest Buddha instead of Budapest, I'm sure Budapest would sound weird to us. Do you prefer Pest Buddha? And if you've ever visited the city or even lived there, what part of the city do you prefer? Buddha or Pest? Budapest was suggested by Wolfgang Bernecker, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as the name explains patron saint of Budapest. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a name explained video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just one dollar a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a name explained Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just the small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you all so much for reaching the end of the video. Stick around and check out another video and subscribe to update on all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name George Ezra at me so I know you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again thank you all so much.